Oh, we got little, Eli's little seat right here. Okay, we our Eli Olson might be joining us, but um, we're not sure yet. We Paisel might join us too. We don't know. People uh, on our podcast sometimes just roll in. We see them here on the North Shore. We all live pretty close, and we're all near a bike path. People are always riding their bike around, or walking, or checking waves, and oftentimes we'll see people. And we've begun just telling them, hey. If you see us and we're podcasting, like, and you want to roll in, just roll in and sit down with us. Cause. Yeah, like we just did with Paisel. Paisel might show up. Nate doesn't have very long. You got like, what, 30, 45 minutes probably? Mm-hmm. Um, but we're on episode, this is episode 17. 17. Correct? Big 17. Did we fact check that? Fact Seven? checkers. <laughs> fact checkers anonymous. 17. Check this out. My mom just got it for me. It's a, a bowl of little crystals. ASMR. Is this too loud? <laughs> How does that make you feel? It feels really good on my hands. It feels calming, but it sounds <laughs> not calming. <laughs> I'm it's our little table decoration. Okay, today's episode is brought to you by Polar Monkey's Cold Plunges. I often find myself deep diving into techniques, tools, and products that elevate our daily rituals, optimize performance, and enhance our well-being. And let's talk cold immersion for a moment. Polar Monkeys is at the forefront of merging style with functionality. When I say they create the coolest designs, I'm not just referring to temperature. Polar Monkeys cold plunges are also art pieces, but it's not about looking good. It's about quality products at a fair price. In a market that can sometimes seem prohibitive cost-wise, Polar Monkeys stands out with its commitment to fair prices and quality. If you haven't experimented with the benefits of cold immersion from mood boosting, mental clarity, focus to better sleep and recovery, now might be the time. For listeners of our podcast, Polar Monkeys is extending an exclusive offer. Head over to their website, polarmonkeys.com, and use the code COA and Nate for a special $100 off your order. So dive deep, refresh, rejuvenate, and make a statement while you're at it. Thanks to Polar Monkeys Cold Plunge. Big shout out to them for supporting the podcast. And, of course, for making cold plunges not just a ritual, but a statement of style and accessibility. Support for the Nate & Co. podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. <laughs> Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Over 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. off and free worldwide shipping with the code COANATE at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 16 million balls. (laughs) That's what it says. (laughs) Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Thanks to their advanced skin safe technology, the lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 4000K LED spotlight. You need a more precise shave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code COANATE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use the code COANATE. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. I wanted to talk about a common thing that happens in surfing because we we spoke about this after our podcast we did our last podcast and we're like oh we should definitely talk about that so before we forget i wanted to get into board related injuries surfing yeah so i know you had a lot to talk about on that and we both were injured by our surfboards yes as well um and and really and that's been happening forever in surfing obviously um but i was telling koa there's a port of swell happening right now, and um, a big wave surfer from South Africa, Matt Bromley, had flown over for that swell and had his gun, which is we call big boards gun sometimes, um, it speared him in the forehead. And so you have a big nine-foot board. They are not like smaller boards. They have way thicker stringers and what we call beak nose sometimes, where the nose of the board is way thicker. Um, but it had, it had broken, and it had speared him in the head and supposedly, like, cut him from eyebrow to scalp. Uh, he's totally fine now. He it sounds like he doesn't even have a concussion. He's just... South Africans are real different. Jeez, but, um, dude. I was like, man, that's so crazy, because that injury, my injury, I was in... The day before I speared my elbow, 
the guy that was working at the camp in Sumatra speared his arm right here. And it had also, for whatever reason, he didn't hit an artery or anything, but it had squirted blood when he first speared himself right here in the bicep. And we, we had thought he had torn an artery because he was like, I'm lightheaded, like all this stuff. Um, and we were just, everyone was on edge. Um, and all of those turned out great, but mainly because, what was it, a month ago? Surfing and the surfing community lost one of its heroes and one of the people that we all grew up. He grew up in here in Hawaii, we call it Jones. Um, literally next door. Right next door, yeah, they lived right there. In a freak accident, his board speared him and hit an artery, and he bled out in the water, unfortunately. God, so sad. And it was just like one of those things where you're like, you, it, it, we don't know the wave he was on or whatever the situation was, but a spearing of your board in the wrong spot, you like realize like, oh, it just takes like, one poke for us in the wrong spot. Yeah. And it could end you. A fin or the nose yeah. or even just part of a broken piece or just like getting whacked so hard it can just it knock you unconscious. Hurts. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't matter the size of the waves. Like think about our injuries. Just recently, like obviously we go and like try to surf crazy waves, whatever, but I got injured on like a four foot wave. You got injured doing yeah. turns on like a sick little wave. Yep. Like not even one of the crazy slabs you're at. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter the size of the wave or the size of the board. Uh, those type of things can kind of just happen I th at go any on. time. Yeah. But I was going to say, um, at what point, like, there's so many in so many board-related injuries in the last month. At what point do we, like, go back to, like, those old rubber nose guards? Remember at what yeah. point we all wore them? My dad would be really happy. If, I know. I, I would, my <laughs> dad would be so sad. I, I, I remember our first trip to Tahiti. I, or my first trip to Tahiti, I was 16, and my dad was, like, pretty gnarly with what, like, he made me wear a helmet and nose guards and stuff. I went to Tahiti by myself and met up with these guys, you and your brothers, and, like, uh, I forget who else was there, but um, my dad, before I went, I had all these new boards. My dad went and put nose guards on every one of them, and I had these, like, weird shovel nose boards from like i think it was stretch back in the day those, those round noses yeah. and my dad had put one of those rubber nose guards on it so it was like this round nose with a yeah. nose guard coming <laughs> off of it like this high because it didn't fit on there <laughs> it's like a little nipple and i got to it to here i just took them all off i'm like he's not here that's <laughs> whatever a kid, you're just so embarrassed about that type of stuff like god you just never want to caught with your equipment looking, looking like a cool. dork I, I was 16 years old and like the whole, I, all I cared about was like, yeah. oh, I gotta be cool, yeah. surfer, like nose guards, helmets are so not cool. But it was weird at that time, it was a huge thing. Guys were putting them on all their boards. Um, you were like saying, oh, you don't want to get your eye poked out or a hole poked you. And it we, even got to, guys were making rubber lined fins. Remember? They would make the... Oh yeah, I had those on all my boards too, back <laughs> yeah, in the day when I was growing yeah. up. And they're kind of legit theories. Dude, like, they're, they're pretty... What? It, okay, okay. I have an idea for us. We have to find someone out there because we come up... Me and you together come up with a lot of ideas on this podcast and then they never go anywhere because we leave each other and we like forget and then just <laughs> don't ever talk about them again. But if we could put someone in charge of being like, oh, like we want to make stickers or like phone cases or nose guards from our podcast and just have a little merch site set up that can just be like sick here. we should do that live? eli just showed up huh you guys live yeah yeah we're live we look at a little, little seat we got for you wow roll in hey, put it there for the listeners eli olson is hey, joining us put it there See, yeah, we gotta turn your mic on our friend we said get over here we miss you join us um yeah you're on your mic's good where i'm talking about testing boats and hose all of the board related injuries in the last few months and how we all used to have little rubber nose guards. And even when they started making the rubber fins. Yeah. And just Manahuni. like. At what point does Yeah, Manahuni days. Manahuni days. Yeah. Would they um, give them to us? Is that when we I, would all end up with them? In all their little like surf night packets, they would just come in everything we got. Yeah. I, um, I remember when they first came out. I was. Some people outside. I think we were at the stage. That age where I was like. You're like, does it not look cool? Go is and just we, saying. I remember your like, dad would be like, you guys are turning them on. And I'm like, damn it. And we would like have to throw them on, but I'd always peel it off. Um, 
Those things are huge, though. I've yeah. fully been doinked in the eye by my nose with that thing. Yeah. And I was oh, like... Oh, with the guard on. With the guard on. Just grom, like, I don't know, 11 years old, maybe? Mm-hmm. And that then, was when they were big, and we were just saying there's been, like, we just talked about McCullough, Matt Brownlee and Porter dude. just now, my elbow. Yeah. Boards are fighting back. Every big swell, I tell people, I'm like, I think I'm equally scared of um, my board. Mm-hmm. Than the wave because mm-hmm. I'm like if that thing, how much do our boards weigh? Twenty pounds? Too much to get hit by. Like fifty pounds. Yeah, fifty. I don't know. The board it's, bags turn out to be like hundred twenty pounds to travel with those. <laughs> oh my gosh! Boards, speaking dude. speaking of board bags being heavy, and airlines do not fly. Oh no! Japan Airlines. Did you have a horror story? This is Japan Airlines. <laughs> this is my butt. <laughs> <laughs> it went like that. Really. And, Six hundred dollar. Oh my god! And I was like, "There's no way around this." And they're like, "No." Did they like, do a per bro. board charge, or they yeah. they told you open it up? First two seconds, they're like, "How many boards?" I was like, two. Oh. and I just smiled. I was just like, <laughs> oh, I just cr- didn't have it in question the question. You never want to be asked. I looked her in the eye. I'm like, two. And I just smiled, and she just goes, Whoosh. "Is She's that like one, two, three, four, five? I was like, oh I was my like, god! I was like, "Was there five in there?" Shit. Yeah, who would do that? Case, <laughs> case, 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 you put those on your board in there. I was oh. like, I have no, I've never seen that in my life. I have no idea. Oh, but um, what's uh, the most you've been charged? Was that the most? Um, I have a crazy story. Fiji, seven fifty. What? One time. What airline? Fiji. Fiji Airways. Airways? Fiji Airways. I think that was the worst. They I, suck. When was that? That was in the time. I saw. He, was that when Healy was? Me and Healy got destroyed. Oh, you guys went to that the one. How crazy is it? Just the lady who, the person, the person who checks you, you in could be like Dude. make or break. Mm-hmm. They have the power yeah. to just completely fist you or hook you up. A hundred percent. And you know what's super funny is, I don't know if we can, how rogue we can get in this. Go but ahead. Go every, off. every time a gay guy has checked me in, free boards. Well, gay guys have always loved you. <laughs> <laughs> we go out and party when we're younger. And, <laughs> gay guys would be drawn yeah. to Eli. It was the craziest damn. thing. They'd be no, like, hit like, on free him. Boards, free boards, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I don't know. There was a point where I was like, I asked Coach, dead serious. I was like, do I look gay? <laughs> like, what, I was what like, is it I'm doing? <laughs> I, was exactly like, I was like, I'm, what? <laughs> when we were going to addiction and all that all the time, yeah. I was uh, worried. I was a little bit worried, but... Mm-hmm. You know what? I take it as a compliment. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I was Airlines like, Thank you. have been dealing with surfing and surfboards for how many years now, and they continue to just absolutely be so Dude. baffled and shocked that you're taking boards on a plane. Oh, yeah. Still. Yeah. You're like, like, I checked in with you last week. We traveled that amount of times. Yeah. Last week you said go, and now you're going to charge me per board. We got to yeah. start keeping track of their names. So you're like, you're like, Denise, I saw you last month. I've had a few remember bad ones, and I just now... looks for the gay guy. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's a strategy. Like, I'm, like, letting like... People, I'm letting people cut me. I'm like, um, you can go. I'm like, you guys so I busy. throw out that because we'll have Zord there. I'll say if they start getting really like, no, no, no I'll say, hey, we're filming for a, a airlines and travel review channel we have on YouTube. No, wow. And we're about to start recording, and they their act completely changes. Oh, uh, well, I can call my supervisor. <laughs> supervisor's like, just let them go. It's fine. Like, yeah. They're terrified of yeah. the social media thing. That now. is you can brilliant, yeah. dude. That's, that's say, a really good call. You want to pull this? We're doing reviews on traveling with different airlines right now. We've been doing it all summer. Is that what you want on your plate? <laughs> yeah, Do you want me to a, shut this airline like, down? You're going to upgrade me. <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're not just going to let my boards go free, but I want first class. Dude, that is amazing. You're that's like, a brilliant idea, dude. Mm-hmm. That's a really good idea. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. There was one time I was flying from L.A. to Indo with Dingo, and we were flying, I want to say China Airways or something. That's another bad one. Yeah, so bad. And long story short, it ended up costing... Dingo didn't have his wallet on him, so I had to, and he ended up, he had like two board bags full. I had my board bag stacked with like six or seven boards, but I ended up paying, I think, $1,200 just in surfboard fees. Because more than the ticket. More than the ticket. Yeah, Yeah. the ticket was like 600 bucks back then. How frustrating is that? I think when we went to Fiji that time, I think my flight was seven. And the boards were more, and I just never forgot paying more for my boards than the flight. 
That's and I was just so like, the crazy. I tried to tell them too. I was like, I was like, this this is more than the whole flight. Yeah. And they're like, sorry. Have you seen the new policy that they're implementing where they're weighing passengers? Mm-hmm. And they have like, I thought that was a joke. No, Can it's real. The, the liberals are gonna let that fly. I don't know. I don't know. But they're fully. A couple airlines have picked it up now. Where? Wait. So big people pay more. I'm not sure what they're going to do, but they're weighing the passengers and whatever they're going to planning to implement. I don't know how. I don't know if it's for that reason. So they got to buy like two seats or something? I don't know if it would be aimed at that, but they're definitely starting to. That's wild. Um, one of my favorite memes that you share kind of consistently is when they're like, oh, we're sorry, you're, there's two pounds, you're two pounds over on this bag. You're going to have to pull it out of this bag put it in another bag that's going on the same plane yeah. and i'm just like yeah it, it's mind-blowing crazy i just like want to tell them like do you hear what you're asking me to do so i just flew back this bag to that bag yeah. same plane <laughs> yeah, same <laughs> whether i carry it or it's downstairs yeah. like i just i don't know i just flew back from uh just from california on united and i didn't have any surfboards so i was all psyched to travel but mm-hmm. i had a lot of luggage just like with stuff and like boot, like my boot and like crutches, just like tons of shit, mm-hmm. right? So it was pretty heavy. And they ended up making me, like, they wouldn't even accept an overweight fee for some reason. But I'm like, I've flown United so many times. Like, I, you can fly with like a hundred pound bag usually. Yeah. And the guy's like, no, you gotta separate the bags. And luckily, I had like an extra backpack in a bag. That's crazy. And dude, I had to open like two bags in the middle of the airport and look like just some crackhead, just stuffing. They wouldn't shit. just let you pay an overweight. No, fee. they wouldn't. Not not at all. That's insane. Dude, it was wild. It's just non. It's just they're just relentless. Like we said, it's the person. Did you see? Mm-hmm. It's did, the person you get. Yeah, they just want it to be is. A dick on the day. I, I really just open your bags right here, then leave it. Like when they start telling you that stuff, I don't care. Leave it. You're Catch like, them on a bad day. Some angry yeah. lady, oh, husband, man, just like that's the worst. Or something. When you roll up and you're just trying to be super polite, you're like, "Hey, like morning or whatever." You're like, "Good morning." Within the first two seconds, you no, know, no. Um, you're just like, "Okay, she smiled. She's happy. It's looking good." Or they're just grumpy, and you're like. I'm fucked. Yeah, <laughs> I'm done yeah, like, this, is, this is not looking good. Not gonna yeah. go well. You know who has some of the worst check-in people is Hawaiian Airlines. <clears throat> yeah, really The bad. rudest How's that bread people. Feel? Sick, huh? <laughs> My mom got it for me. Yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. I've had really bad experiences with Hawaiian Airlines. Telling me to leave my boards because 50-pound weight limit, the board, was, board bag was 52 pounds, mm. and the lady told me, leave them. I don't care. I said, what? Like, you're <laughs> Hawaiian Airlines. This is where surfing started. Yeah. Like, surfing is Hawaii, and it's yeah, and you're the airlines of Hawaii, yet you have no surfboard policy. I have a good No, they Hawaiian had Airlines. their policy was two boards per bag or nothing. Not even let me pay more. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I'll pay more. I'll pay $100 per board. It was just two boards per, per bag. bag. Yeah. That's it. Or nothing else. Yeah, yeah. So did they finally change that? They changed. Yeah. It. But yeah, I have a good I have a good story because when Damn. I was chasing the QS, remember I was like on my little run, Juan Bulls and the regional thing. Yeah. So I was like going to I was traveling a lot and yeah. I was just like, oh like I'll fly whatever airlines randomly. I was just won the regional title, flying Hawaiian to go to compete at um US Open. Mm-hmm. Huntington. Huge event. And uh I had four brand new DHDs, like haven't seen daylight. And the the lady goes, two boards per bag. And I'm like, I only have one bag. Can I pay double? Can like just charge me for two? Yeah. We'll put them in. I mean, I only had one bag. They're yeah. like, they're like, no. And the lady's like, you can leave it at the storage. And I tried to explain, I was like, hey, I just won the Hawaii regional title. I'm going to California to represent Hawaii, trying to like Surfing for Hawaii. Yes. Like, I was like, I'm waving the Hawaiian flag. Like, help me get there. With where's my surfing board. started? Yes. Where's, where's surfing, surfing started? So, I, so I'm trying to be <laughs> super, Hawaiian Airlines. I'm yeah. trying to be super polite and I'm like sweating. I'm like just all stressed out. Long story short, they just completely shut me down. I take two brand new boards. I never forgot it. I grab towels and jackets and I tape around these brand new That's boards. So heavy, dripping sweat. You know, and like uh, airports are just like you're always hot for some when you reason. You get sweaty. Bef- you, 
Get sweaty before your flight. I'm wearing pants, and it was a bad idea. I had warm milk. <laughs> <laughs> warm milk was a bad choice. <laughs> it was a terrible choice. But um, <laughs> towels and hoodies and tape. And I remember just being like, they're not going to make it. And they made me sign a thing basically saying, like, if they show up in pieces, that's on you. And I just, it was wow. the first time I ever was like, I'm going to Instagram. Make you take so them I, out of the bag, then sign a waiver, a damage waiver. Mm-hmm. And then I remember even like checking them in. I told the guy, I was like, I was like, come here. Come here. I was like, can I pay you? Put these in the bag as soon as it's behind the wall. And he's like, no. And I was like, oh, I'm done. Nightmare, man. Yeah, it was the first time I ever like went to Instagram trying to like throw a a company under the Mm -hmm. bus. Like, Mm -hmm. I remember like Slater and a ton of people just backed me. And I was like, I was like, wow, that was kind of people fully rally behind it. I remember JetBlue. Oh, John Uh, destroyed John. Their stocks went down after John. John never gets upset, but he was just, he was more upset because he said, oh, my boards got destroyed. And they basically said, like, not our problem. Yeah. And he was like, oh, okay. Can we? Maybe we'll try to find that photo. Gotta find the post. Yeah, yeah. It was like destroyed. Posted it and there was like thousands of comments tagging JetBlue. Yeah. We'll never fly another flight with you again. Yeah, it Everyone went a little boycott. Viral. It went totally I'm, viral until JetBlue on their own reached out to John. We're so sorry. Yeah. Can we please take this down? We will reimburse you for everything. We'll never let this happen again. Like yeah. it just showed like the power of social media in certain instances. Like you get enough movement and piss enough people off, your company's gonna be hurt by social media. Your customers poorly. Good yeah. and bad thing in that movement. Mm-hmm. Like when it's people crying about shit with that powerful movement, you're like, oh no. But when it's good things like that. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Or like how powerful it can be, like like with Maui and like yes. mm. the fundraising, yeah, like just mm-hmm. the crowdfunding from civilian people not having to essentially lie or rely completely on the government, yeah, you know? Like hundred no, percent. Yeah, did you guys already talk about that in your we last did, one? In okay, last one, yeah. sweet. We did. If you I mean we can talk about whatever oh, if I you just had anything was, to say or you like you guys have a sick platform, so it's like yeah. never yeah. hurts if people didn't see the last one and you guys see this one uh, we could um, throw the links in whatever one we put in the last mm-hmm. one we'll put the links back in this one if you guys want to help yep. support the, all the people in maui because what they went through is just it's a there's the worst fi- fire in history worst Dude. fire in, in history yeah i like i just got chicken skin just thinking about it but um That's so crazy. i was in i was in indo mm-hmm. it's such a shocker i was trying so hard to link with you and i was like Co's gonna come and everybody got injured but yeah I was like having such a fun time, and then I went to deserts with Mason, and then I came back. You know, deserts just your phone doesn't work. Yeah, I got back to Bali, and it was just like overload. Like, and it straight up was like kind of ruined my trip. I was just like trying to. I was like I should just be having fun, but every day I was just like so bummed thinking about how gnarly that was, and I like couldn't be present. I was kind of just like just hurting no one expected it to be that severe yeah you think oh wildfire okay we've had a few small ones before Mm -hmm. but an entire town and like hundreds of people possibly over a thousand dead yeah they're still overnight there's still a lot of people missing Mm -hmm. so i mean this day and age people are missing after a couple days it's like yeah not a good sign god so sad yeah if anybody out there has the power to help it's amazing if not, even sharing awareness is still good. We'll put good the deep. links down there. Um, speaking yeah. of Indo, how sick was your trip? I saw you post something from G-Land that looked like pipe. G-Land was G-Land insane. G-Land looked huge. That was, it looked like chopes. It was Dude, huge. That, it, um, Wide barrel. Yeah. We put that up right here. Uh, thank you. I, um, that was definitely the best part of the trip. Yeah, G-Land like, was better than your desert strike? Way better, yeah. Um, I... Went over there. You know how, like, you get to Bali and there's so many options. You're just like, where did I go? It's kind of stressful mm-hmm. picking where yeah. to go. And, and, like, normally I'm always with the boys and, like, I'm just a team player. I'm like, you guys want to go to Neos? I'm like, let's go to Neos. Mm-hmm. Or you want to go to Kendui? I'm like, let's go. Yeah. But I was solo, so I was just like, hmm, I can go anywhere. So I started just, like, hitting up different camps and, like, picking the boys' brains. I really wanted to get Green Bush. Yeah. I was I just, for some reason, was like, I was, that was, like, the thing I really wanted. That seems like the craziest way of out there it just looks like so slabby and perfect yeah. and i was like even if it's not the biggest like did it, it get good that swell 
No, but I so I got right so call. lucky. How I was does that feel? I was trying so hard, and it was like oh, because G-Line and Greenbush are the same direction, right? Yeah, but or, Greenbush is more sensitive with winds. I think. Yeah, yeah, Greenbush is super super fickle. So I was trying really hard. It just seemed like every door kept getting shut on me, and I was just like camps, boats, flights, and I was just like everything pushed me to G-Line, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to G-Line, and I just got super lucky because. I started my first session. It was like eight, ten foot solid. First wave, I get burned. It was was it Buckle crowded my board. at that size? Um, Who yeah. did you get burned by? Um, it was an Australian guy, and I broke my board basically, but it was still like in one piece. Mm -hmm. But it was like, it was busted. It was my only step up. First wave of the trip. First wave. Did you oh. tell him anything or what happened? Yeah. Give us the whole breakdown. I, um, <laughs> Did so, you hit him? No, no. <laughs> I, Choke uh, him out. I, little slap. I was like, Eli if we had seen each other maybe Australia. a little earlier, <laughs> it would have maybe been like a little bit more. But I like, I was so mad because I was just like, first wave. Yeah. But then luckily, like I paddled out and we had a little time. I had a little time to like chill out. Yeah. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, okay, I just paddled out. Yeah. I went straight around everybody, and I was like, if someone did that to us, yeah, I would go too. So I kind of was thinking about it, and I was like... Why'd you paddle around everyone? The waves were firing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're just psyching. You just, do it. Uh, you're the worst <laughs> I've ever <laughs> seen. I, I know I have my reasons. Dude, but I was just like... I was, <laughs> I was just like looking at... I was literally looking at these sets coming in, and I had just never been to g -Land, and I was watching all these videos of like the Hobgoods and stuff. Yeah. I was so fired up that I paddled out, and I was like, these guys aren't deep enough. But I it's a huge straight, playing field, right? Huge. So like, when you say these guys aren't deep enough, that that for those listening, it might sound like, whoa, he paddled 10 foot deeper than them. In a huge point break playing field, and when I've paddled out the place, I've seen it. Guys are sitting maybe 200 feet away from where you could be. Yeah. 200 foot yeah. of barreling wave. Is and at like, that point, do you like, you're like, do I miss 200 feet of barrel because yeah. the rest of them are sitting here? Like, you no. gotta start to weigh those off. Never. It's, it's tough for sure. And like, my whole mindset for the last trip was like, just be peaceful. Mm -hmm. Like I just was like, just get waves, be mellow, and then I started off with that first thing, <laughs> like, and I was just like, sparks were flying out of my ears, and I was like, but I had a little time to think, and I was yeah. just like, okay, you know what? I just uh, just got I out. just what got out. I was like, shake it off. But then the guy paddled up, and. He kind of barked a little bit after burning me, and then I just lost it. Oh, really? He, yeah. He said, like, you paddle around. Yeah, there. like, yeah. he called it on me, which yeah. I was just like, I was like, even if you're right. <laughs> I was like, but uh. so we argued, and it didn't go anywhere, luckily. And then a few, I don't know, like a couple hours go by. Mm -hmm. I ended up breaking the board because it was just yeah, it was folded. It was creased already. So I was writing a shortboard in 10-foot GLAN, which is, if anyone's been to GLAN, for one, the water's freezing. No one told me. Really? Freezing. I would have worn a spring suit or mm -hmm. a long arm spring, no problem. I've been to Indo. I was, cold. I was in a I was in a rash guard it's shivering places uncontrollably. It's super strange. Yeah. I thought there was like I don't know, some water coming from the mountains or something. It was like yeah. it was like could be California cold. And um but uh, anyways, I broke the board, did a lap, had time to reset. I ended up like Talking to the guy, we shook hands, and I was just like, I was just like, hey, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I, I paddled around, and he felt really bad because I was like, that was my only step up. That's yeah. why I was so mad. And then, um, so I was on a shortboard and ended up having an amazing session and kind of turned around everything just because I was just like, I'm not gonna like yeah, feed into that's that. The way to do it. And like, you guys know, like, mental mindsets are so big mm -hmm. in sessions. Like, I think it's like, sometimes I feel like it's like 80, 20, like 80% mental mm -hmm. it's like because you just creating it's like 99 percent because you know like with your ability surfing you're good enough to surf anything it's just like all a mental mm -hmm. battle yeah. yeah we talk about how many really good surfers don't charge because yeah. it's just straight up they're scared or whatever but yeah. i'm like i'm like dude you would be fine you just gotta grow some balls like yeah but um ended up having a killer session and uh I was missing you guys because the whole game plan was like, Ko is going for Maz. You're already there. 
I link there, up, yeah, I was get like, the crew together. It would have been so fun, but um, we got time. Where's, where are we going to next? Mexico right now is huge. Mexico is firing. We're Mexico is so that. good. Dude. And the points are pumping. I need to go. The forecast looked insane. Like I was, seven days of just. I was thinking about it. That'd be a fun trip. That'd be, that'd really be fun so trip. fun. Our trip last just with the year spot. was it? When did we do that? Bar that was last trip? summer. That was so fun. That, that was surf. That was just so much surfing. We surfed our brains yeah. That's, out. That was good for the soul. Mm -hmm. I was like, felt like a grom again. Just like, we were doing dark to dark. Dark to dark. We'd eat the, in the biggest, desert heat, eat like. the biggest <laughs> dinner and just pass out and time travel. Wake oh. up and do it all again. It was like 100 degrees, too. It was so hot. Walking back up <clears throat> the beach was so gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and these guys, Jack and Zord, were just posted up. Posted Dude, you guys are the, the heroes. The filmers out there that just worship the sun all day. Sun worshippers. But they got a few waves, too. It's intense. Oh, yeah, they you guys were, you guys were kind of yeah. shredding. It was heavy. Wait, I gotta go. I don't remember. Oh, so, yeah, I'm gonna leave you guys to it, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, happy ending. I'll see you guys in the next episode. No happy ending? <laughs> Bye, Nate. <laughs> uh, you can move if you want. Okay. If you want to move to that seat. A little more comfy. A little, little gonna, higher up here. Yeah, we had you on the short seat. Wait, which one is that? Figure out. I think I turned the, Nate's mic off while we were waiting for Eli, and I don't know if we could hear him, but we'll try to do something with the audio. <laughs> we do but the still, podcast. It's going to be a great podcast. <laughs> Eli's here now. We were just talking about Indo. And um, so overall, it was a sick trip, huh? Yeah. Even though you went by yourself, which is case. It was trippy for sure doing like the solo deal because like, I don't know. We just we always team up, um, but yeah, it was yeah. it was insane. It was good, like especially with the stunt work being like so busy and really starting to pull me away. Yeah, we're on strike right now. I was just like, it was the first time in a while I didn't have to worry about missing a job or anything. I was just like, I have complete freedom to just drop and go. That's so nice. Yeah, and I was just, so because we were talking when I was in Australia. And my plan was to surf that swell in Australia, and then it was yeah. going to be perfect timing for you to, or for me to meet up with you in Indo. Like, Dude, perfect I know. timing. <clears throat> and two days into my trip, I just got hurt. Dude, I know. Such I was gonna, a bummer. I was fully going to try and, like, almost surprise you guys in Oz, and then just be like, as soon as we get there, surf whatever score, and yeah. be like, we're going to Indo. Because Oz, Oz is a good layover from here to Indo. And you stop there, even if you want to stop for, like, a day or two. When my first time ever going to Oz was with you, and we were like teenagers. I don't know. Oh, how old were we? You were probably were you? 16 or 15. No, we were older than that. Maybe you were 17, I was 18. Maybe around there, yeah. Because we were, we stayed with Dingo. Yeah. Or were we that young? We were pretty young. No, we were no, no. pretty young. I we, feel like it no, was we like would have been, I would have been like at least 17 because I had gone on that. Indo trip with Dingo and Mikala when I was 17. Okay. So you're 18, I was 19. Something yeah, like probably that. around Because it was like fresh after high school. I remember we were like, but, uh. But you've always looked really young. So when you look back on photos, I'm like, how old are you in this photo? I was a very late bloomer. Yeah, I remember, me too. But yeah, that's a good thing. It's good, yeah. yeah. It lasts a long time. But what were we saying about Oz? Um, first one? Oh, that trip. The boys kept saying, I remember like Dingo guys kept throwing it out there like maybe we'll go to Indo or maybe we'll jump over here maybe and I was like in my head I didn't know how close it was so I was just like I was like isn't that like a huge trek I was like they just yeah. keep throwing it out there like it's an island hop but um if you guys don't know I think from Australia to Bali is only three hours yeah well so it's like, no it's like five or six is it I it depends swear. on what side of Australia you're on somebody told me it was three and I was like that is like so mellow it's like, like five, it's i'd say it's f just average five yeah. which is still that's like here to california which is like pretty so mellow. easy if uh, a lot of i it's pretty crazy how big australia is because australia yeah. is as long as the u.s it's just as big as the u.s it just looks like it's not on a map and everything can kill you everything can kill you yeah i uh i fear spiders yeah. Like more than any insect. And I remember every time I was in Australia, I'd have to search the room like bed, <laughs> ceiling. And I was like, I will not go to sleep until I like know there's nothing that can kill me in here. You're so funny with that kind Dude. of stuff too. <laughs> yeah. You'll just like, you're so meticulous and like Mosquitoes have to. Mosquitoes and spiders. 
can catch his hands. <laughs> yeah, I've been on so many trips trips with Eli. And he's, so luckily for me and Nate um, and everyone in our crew, pretty much everyone, we don't really get um, bit by mosquitoes. But if there is a mosquito around, it definitely travels towards Eli. So a lot of places we go they have like malaria and dengue fever and like diseases that are can possibly Terrifying. kill you. Yeah. yeah. So luckily, I'm never too worried about it. But when you go somewhere that does have mosquitoes like that, you get places with mosquito nets and Eli, every night you will see him before bed, just like everything is tucked in perfect. There's not a single hole in the net or anything. Or if his yeah. net has, if it's like a shitty mosquito net and there's a hole in it, he'll be like switching it with someone. <laughs> yeah, like, like before, I, while someone's not looking. No, yeah, like, I, can't, I cannot have this net. I'll die. It I makes get, um, sense. They, they love you, dude. It's I don't crazy. Know, I don't know what it is, but I get bit worse than... I've never met someone who gets bit worse than me. And it's crazy. Like, yeah. I'm just like, like, you're not like hairy and I don't know. Like, it's not like you're like, they have this layer they can't get to. It's just my legs. I don't my know. My legs are hairy. I think I'm, I think my blood is A positive. They must be drawn to blood and I type. think it's a, I think that must be part of the reason. And then, I don't know. I've heard people say like, oh, you got to eat garlic or onions. And I'm like, I, I love that. Like. I'll eat that, no problem. But yeah, it does not uh, affect me. Remember in Tahiti when we were Groms, we had some oh yeah skin so something like skin so soft mosquito repellent. It's just repellent, and I remember just basically Tahiti is so hot and humid, and I'm like in Before my boxers. Before there was AC anywhere. Oh, when we used to just rough yeah. it. I'm in boxers. I basically take a bath in this oil mosquito repellent. And I'm just so sticky and shiny. <laughs> and I sit down for dinner. I remember just having like literally like almost a little puddle right here and eating. And a mosquito lands in it. And I watched the thing just bite me. And I was like, fuck. I remember hyping the mosquito repellent up so <laughs> yeah. hard too. I'm like, no, there's no way they're going to yeah. bite you. There's no You're way. You're like, dude, we're good. Yeah, I remember that. that we were not funny, good. Dude. I got so lit up. TD's the worst um. Rangiro for a contest. The worst I, I haven't been ever been bit in my life. We had no nets, no fans, no screens. So it was like just like that, like the glass. Yeah. Whatever. And uh no screens. I remember just being in my boxers head to toe before our competi before the The uh, QS. The QS the contest. And I had never had such a bad sleep in my life. I was um there was one point where I was trying to flex unconscious. <laughs> I was I would get out of bed, take a cold shower, go back to bed. Mosquitoes all over. I'd throw the sheet over me, start dripping sweat. Yeah, kick it off, and there'd just be a million. I was like a heat bomb that they were just Loving. kamikaze diving. And I remember at one point flexing. I was so mad. I was flexing, <laughs> holding my breath, and I was like, I'm gonna just wake up in the morning or die. I don't know. I was I was so freaked out, and then I finally just pass out. Next day, it looked like I had chicken pox. Everybody was like, you got lit up. I was with the McNamara's, and they barely had any bites. I was just like, mosquitoes. Some people, did just get lit up by mosquitoes. mosquitoes. It's crazy. They're the so, worst thing ever. They are. I would be happy if, they, if that's one species that's just left the planet. Does anybody know out there if mosquitoes just deleted from Earth, would it affect everything, like fish and whatever? I think like, mosquitoes kill more people than anything. Dude, it's in the world. Kind of terrifying. It'd be good if they were gone. I don't care. Yeah, would it affect the do. chain at all? No way. They suck. They're the worst. They're the. I think they're the worst creatures in the world. Actually, there's there's a lot, but yeah, mosquitoes are. They rough. are. So they're deadly in a lot of places, especially places in like deep in Asia and stuff. Kill so many people. I know that's what's scary. Year. Like when we're. Traveling in these third world countries and I get so smoked, it is something in the back of my mind where I'm like, Yeah, this is kind of I'm not trying to sound like a little crybaby, but I was like, Yeah, itching, constantly dealing with that sucks, but like worrying about something super serious, it's like, it's kind of terrifying. It's terrifying. I'm like, You're like, Do yeah. I have malaria? I have You're a like, mosquito we're, bite. We're going to surf these giant waves on dry reef in the middle of nowhere, but at the same time, that mosquito on, on land could do far more damage. So it's yeah. a trip. <clears throat> so what's up with your stunts? What's going on with this strike in the movies and like Hollywood and stuff? It's 
I know because the the movie scene here is so big. Like mm-hmm. even my little brother is a part of it, and lots of friends and family yeah. are like tied into this movie like hollywood movies and stuff and everyone's out of a job yeah like no one's working dude i'm probably the worst person to ask because like even though it's such a big part of my life i don't really pay attention to like all the behind the scenes stuff like i don't even know exactly what the strike's about but it's about money of course everything's about money but um and yeah like i see lb on every job and it's the sickest thing like especially when i'm in a funny costume and I'll just roll up on LB, and I'm like, "What's up?" He'll send me a random photo. Oh my gosh, he has, <laughs> he has photos of me that are so bad, but um, <laughs> so funny, so funny. Um, but yeah, I think it started with the writers. The writers were like dealing with like certain pay, and then like stuff to do with like AI, which is like super trippy. Like you know, like the robots are really just trying to take over. Oh, I saw that thing, Jack. The South Park wrote a full episode of AI, right? I think there was some of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like... So that's what it's about, is the AI. I think that's part of it. Like, they're basically putting their foot down and being like, no. Not allowed. And then the actors and um, performers got behind them, and then everybody just went on strike. And But I'm just tripping out because I'm wondering if people are like, I don't know if they can apply for unemployment or if they're making anything. Because like, I was like, what if you have five kids and a mortgage i'm super grateful i have surfing so i'm still like financially fine and um but i i constantly been thinking about people i'm like dude i hope they're all right because i think some people are probably like losing their houses or struggling big time so afford food yeah food is so so expensive right now why la like they got to be some Gas? of the most expensive places oh, no, they in the are. world. No, we are. Hawaii and Dude. California. We're the most blue states. They so just are crazy. Taxes on taxes. Dude. It is it's crazy. I I'm, I'm very blessed because I make money. I know you are too. Mm-hmm. Like we're not wealthy wealthy, but we do good enough to not worry about filling up our tanks with gas yeah. or like yeah. going to the grocery store and spending money on food, but I was at like I was just checking out somewhere at was it Foodland or I, was, I don't know Whole Foods or something? And I was like, I was like, holy shit! People who are on paycheck to paycheck right now, how are they living? Like affording to to buy this and then fuel for their cars and then like whatever their kids need. I'm like, God, people must be hurting bad. And I saw this crazy yeah. statistic that like, um, a, I don't remember the percentage, so I'm not gonna say it. Maybe I'll just put it in text after. But like people who are making, there's a certain amount of people who are making $100,000 that are living paycheck to paycheck, mm-hmm. which is they don't have any savings. They don't got nothing. They're spending every dollar they have, and then they're going to get taxed on it as well. That's crazy. But, um, it's Remember, like it's over 50%. Like it's over 50% of people making yeah. that are on paycheck to paycheck where you'd think like, oh, this guy's making hundred grand. He's, he's saving great. something, you know? Yeah. But they're just like, dude, it dude. is crazy. Yeah. It's a gas is $6. My truck was, um, I think it was 120 to fill the other day. It used to be 60 maybe $70 to fill. I've had the wow. same truck for a long time. Like, So I was just like, I don't know. Do we blame Joe Biden? Yeah, for sure. I just, <laughs> I just saw someone in Florida, well, like one of these people I follow in Florida, and he just filled up his car. He's like, took a photo of the gas, and he's like, $4. He's like, thanks, Joe Biden, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, gas is fucking six dollars here. Yeah. I'm like, what the it's fuck? A, They're freaked out about four. Yeah. It's insane. People pay a lot. And um even rent out here is like I feel so bad for like local families. Like um What local family is there? There is no local families out here. I know. My street that I'm still on. We'll cut that out, but Cause what's the address exactly? What's your social <laughs> and your pin? Social um, bank ID photo. My street growing up, there was like um there was like a remember the meth lab and it was like super rough. It was like a full crack house trap. Oh house. yeah, on the corner right there. Yeah, on the bottom. So like and then a cop was, lived right next door, right? Yeah, a retired one. <laughs> and uh it was a uh, My car got lit on fire right there. Yeah. Remember you made me park it outside of your driveway? <laughs> you, I don't know why you parked there. Long, a long time ago, Koa and me were going out one night, and he parked on my street. I, I, 
I still live on the same street, but it used to be super rough. But um, his car got lit on fire. Torch. To and the I think ground. it was, I think it just happened to be a bad timing thing because I think the car got lit to make a distraction for a yeah, bunch of other robbers. Yeah, it was. I don't even think it was those meth people over there. Yeah. They were minding their own business at the yeah, time. Yeah, they, they were just, just cranking up cars and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, um, They're like, oh, that car's on fire. <laughs> Let's like, just let it burn. <laughs> like, mm, maybe we'll get the rims after. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I completely spaced out. What we were, we're talking, talking about, about how, uh, like, there's not oh, really many local yeah. families so, left on North so Shore. So my street was all local families. Yeah. When I was in elementary and beginning of high school, and then places would sell and people would disappear. And like, you know, you're young, you don't really pay attention. You're just like, oh, it's a bummer. Like, I, what, another one of my friends left or whatever. But then you get older, and I was just like, fuck, they're being priced out of paradise, and it's super mm-hmm. sad because it's only me and one other local family on the street. That's it. Everyone That's else sad, everyone else is gone. It's and crazy. Yeah, I've been living there since I was born or one. Yeah. So it's just like it's pretty trippy to see like how different it is. And my neighbors are awesome and I love them, but everybody flew in I don't know way later and bought or whatever. But yeah, it's a it's, it's a trip. Crazy. It's it's pretty sad to see like how little locals are and that's like somebody recently was like, "Why is there so many Hawaiians in Vegas?" And I yeah. was like, I was like, because that's like, we call it the, what, the ninth island? Like, yeah. I was like, it's kind of close and people can afford to live out there. They can, you can buy a house. You buy a four bedroom house for 20% of what anything is out here. Oh yeah. I just, tiny little shack. I just beach. looked cause I'm, I get like notifications from Zillow. I was like, oh, like the average price of homes dropped in nine, six, seven, one, two. I'm like, oh, I'll just look at it. <laughs> the average price is like one point eight million dollars so to crazy. buy a house on North Shore. Like, it is crazy. So crazy. And the one thing that Hawaii has, this is how a lot of local families who did own properties have been pushed out because they weren't just renting, but they were mm-hmm. owning. So, what what is super interesting about Hawaii is, or it's super terrible actually, because your property tax can go up with so say i own Without this house doing anything. say say i bought this house my family moved in like in the 50s right mm-hmm. i'm like some old hawaiian family and then all of a sudden it's nowadays and you're not you're on like whatever retirement money you got like set from how long ago and someone buys that house for five million dollars mm-hmm. all of a sudden this house one street from the beach that i paid 200 grand for is now worth three million Mm dollars so you're gonna be paying property tax on that that should be and so you you're now uh there's paisel and his wife riding by so now you're paying the property tax annually of a three million dollar house that should be so there should be rules like they should be grandfathered in like that's no that's just it's just how it is it's we're like one of two states i think that do it our government sucks oh we have the worst government in the entire world it's wild, man. But we can, we can get back on some happier topics yeah. here. Sometimes wanna, we go like a little down. I don't want to sound like we're negative people. It's just we're passionate because <laughs> there's families that lost everything because of that. So it just it sucks. Yeah. But uh, are, are you excited for winter coming up or what? Because Dude, I'm frothing. I haven't been this excited for a season in a long time. Like, yeah, I almost got to chill out a little bit because like I'm trying to. <laughs> put in my board orders and like been training super hard. And I just been like, I can't remember being this fired up for a while. I think because I've been getting so busy in the stunt work and I know that like the strike is still kind of going into the beginning of winter. Yeah. So I get to just really get back to just focusing on surfing and I don't know. I've just been watching old clips and old episodes that we've put out, um, of like firing pipe. And I just like, get so excited we're (laughs) we're in a good position you know we're like kind of like in our primes we're gonna be healthy i'm 170 pounds koa's heavier than me (laughs) which is just crazy because i was always heavier than koa forever but this guy's just getting papa swolio (laughs) i mean he's injured every night (laughs) injured the foot he's just (laughs) cranking weights um we should go lift today after this let's do a little circuit um but I'm super excited. I, uh, I have a feeling, too, because last season was so bad, and I got so lucky. But um, Oh, yeah, you were gone all season. Dude, missed the whole season yeah. um, working on that show. But I'm excited. I just have this 
gut feeling it's going to just be, even if it's not El Nino, like, I don't know how people predict all that stuff. But Water um, temperatures and, like, what? It's Yeah, like, there's crazy. That's so beyond me, but me um, I just have this feeling. I'm like, it's just going to be a crazy season. It's on. Whether Dude. we're just surfing pipe or Jaws, Himalayas. Anything. I can Rockies. Rockies. What those sick Rockies days where it's, like, five to six feet, just perfect barrels, lefts and rights, just Stay nice back. and sunny out, and yeah. just come in right here, cruise, go back out and go surf. Dude. I, that's, like, what I'm looking – obviously, I'm looking forward to pipe, but just, like, just getting surfing. in that routine yeah. of, like – I took that shit for granted when I was – we had – we have the best job in the world, like, surfing we're professionally. We're so lucky. We hang with our best friends. We're athletes. We surf all day. We we have like more freedom than anyone, and then to like, cause I would just be like, oh, like, yeah, we just surf whatever, and we're kind of just like cruising. We'd be like, get a little more picky, you know. And then now, I work on a movie or a show, and it's like dark to dark, Monday through Friday, just grinding. I'm just like, Phew. yeah. I'm like, there's a lot of those rocky days. I should have probably went out because <laughs> yeah. I was just grinding. I was like, shit. <laughs> Nine but five, it, it's kind of cool because it makes me like appreciate it even more now. And I think yeah. that's part of why I'm so excited for the season. I'm just like, I don't know, just fired up. I'm excited and too. I really, really, really hope we get a chance to um, have a really good Himalaya session. You oh, guys, yeah. Let's, let's you guys Koa's, weren't here. Hey, let's show Koa's clip right here. But me and Nate decided to just go super big wave dave we're like we're gonna paddle the biggest wave at jaws ever and that was a mindset so we had to try but we got there and me and nate are the only guys who paddled out in the morning and people just were towing past us and i'm looking at these waves go by and i'm like that's a that's an 80 foot wave and they're <laughs> going so fast and i'm like looking at nate and i'm like it's getting big pretty quick and he's like fuck i know we were sitting on the West Bowl. You know, we normally go further out. Yeah. We were sitting on the West Bowl because we're like, we'll just try to chip into one. And it was West just... West Bowl, you can kind of like, if you see a set coming, you can kind of like scurry yeah. to the side. When you're out the back at Jaws and you're like, well, a bomb's coming, you're like, I'm Bro, caught. you feel a little bit... You never feel safe, but you feel a little bit safer on that you're West like Bowl. You're like scratched. Yeah, you're like, okay, you're like, the boats and skis are just right there. Like, But um, Nate ended up catching a West Bowl one that just doubled up and ran and he just got smoked i ended up just kind of drifting a little further out paisel jump in here john paisel and um we have another guest i remember guys. i remember the sets just getting bigger and bigger and your brother makua pulls up on the ski and he goes get on the fucking ski <laughs> and i'm like okay he just basically was like it is way too big to paddle i'm by myself nate i was like i don't know where nate is and then we towed but then we seen what you guys had got at himalayas and there's still a tiny hole in my heart that has not healed. <laughs> that was the best day, I think, ever. From missing that. John Paisel. On, on this guy's hey. surfboards. We have another guest. Uh, he had to go get a massage. I accidentally had his, Nate's mic off. was just me and Nate for like 10 minutes. And I had his mic off. And this one just talking? sitting here. Dude, this was my Bali Have a seat. Teammate. Have a seat. We got a little stool for you here. Sick. Is his mic on? Yeah, his mic's on. Okay, all the mics are on now, so it's all good. What is Jack's job just to sit there? He's cruising. He just yeah, judges. He's posted up. I, I manage. <laughs> this is a really big TV. Yeah, we got Dude, some that thing, scenics on. I think it's even. Yeah, I've never it is seen big. a TV that big. Yeah. I, I, know, I went a little, <laughs> little overboard on that no, TV. That's killer. You're all. Yeah, so like, I think. It's um, like the size of your wall. Last time we had Paisel on, we had the shitty little mics, huh? You're going to have to get a little closer here. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's fine, right? No, no. The last time we're yeah, gonna have to talk like this. There's yeah. a lot of comments. So wait, you got was too you got far. like a crappy mic. I mean, a good mic, but you have to get super close to it. Yeah, yeah okay. it sucks. You have to beatbox. But so, oh, whatever. And also, there you go. yeah, you're good. You're good. That's fine. All right. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> so, John Faisal, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Our second <laughs> guest to just roll up. Right. You're, you just, and Eli were in Indo forever. I feel like. The whole um, summer? Paisel was there forever. I was, I was there for three months. I did just three under months. a month. Where but were I was, you? Wow. I was in Fiji, Australia, and then I was coming to Indo when Eli was going to go and meet up with you guys. Oh, Jesus. I was about to hit you up for some surfboards, but uh, I got hurt and had to come home. Yeah, what did you do? 
I tore this ligament right here, wow. the plantar. I was on a wave like like this, and you know when you are backside like grabbing your rail? Yeah. I was like that, and then the foam ball hit me, and I went up like oh, this, and I went way. forward. Where, in so, Australia? Yeah. Oh, man. Dude, did your factory light on fire? Yeah, it burned down. After like two weeks after I got to Bali, it burned down to the ground. Your brand new factory, no, huh? No, no, no. It's like uh, my, so it's not my factory. It's like my licensee's factory. So it's like where we oh. build boards in Bali, but yeah. like I don't own the factory or anything. It's somebody else's factory. But um, yeah, it burned down. Like to, it just got scorched. It was crazy. Did, well, how did it happen? The, um, the shaping machine, how, it, it was like, it was full of dust. Bali. Shaping room, shaping machine yeah. room, full of dust. And then they're like when the shaping machine moves, it has wires that move with it. Ooh. And so uh, after years of movement, they it wore shorted down. out and it was like. Tsh, oh, like and the just guy like saw touched. It, it. Literally Isn't saw the a, dust a, like. Yeah, the dust is almost super, like a bomb. Yeah, kind of. And then they clean oh. when they clean your shape when you clean a shaping machine, you clean it with like oil and kerosene. So basically, you're like, here's a bomb. And, um, Holy we're gonna, shit! A, yeah, you clean it with kerosene. Yeah, yeah, but like that's insane. Like here, here we like clean up that dust every day okay. for some reason. I don't know why. They just because weren't doing they, it. Well, it's funny too because like in, in Bali, there's like a lot more. There's a lot more like help available. Like there's so many people. You, it's so it's inexpensive to have people working for you. Yeah, so you could, like easily be like, yeah, I'm gonna have that guy clean it up. You know, yeah. it, it would cost you like ten bucks or something. The guy but, just doesn't um, know what he's doing. Well, he's for like... some reason they didn't do that. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty gnarly. The uh, hello, it, yes. It like no one got hurt, which is super cool. That's and good. that was the That's biggest the main thing, part. Yeah. But like the da like shaping machine was gone. 800 blanks burned up, like Holy like unshaped shit. raw blanks. So he had oh, a store. Oh, you guys there's, had a big factory no, there, there like huh? 800 blanks. And I went there the shit. next day, and the blank storage room was right next door to the shaping room, or the shaping machine room. And, like, there wasn't even dust. It was, like, an empty room. And, there, like, it had, it had these, like, um, aluminum, like, pull-down, like, like roll-up doors. Yeah. yeah. They are just melted. Like, it was, like, melted aluminum. Wow. And, the, and there wasn't even, like... You would think like, okay, 800 blanks in a room, like there's going to be like couple part of something, you know, yeah. some little scattered things. It was yeah. like gone. Wow. It's pretty nice. Yeah, fire is gnarly. Yeah, it was crazy. Fire but nobody got scared. hurt. The whole thing's destroyed completely though. But Are you guys yeah, going to rebuild? Pretty, and the, the, that thing's the guy who owns it is redoing stuff, yeah. And they the, what, build fast. Yeah, the only thing they did, they saved all the resin and the fiberglass so mm -hmm. they could start glassing boards. Oh, cool. Right away somewhere else. So yeah. So just like rented a new space and they're doing Shaving. good. They'll be fine. In the next few months, they'll be like up and running 100%. Oh, that's good. How is it? It is gnarly. That's gnarly. How is it to get like a full shaping machine down there? Yeah. From Australia, it's not that bad. Oh, yeah. But, true. And, and the guy had a, um, he already had like a long relationship with the guy he had bought it from, the okay. one he owned. Like yeah. he's, he's done a lot of upgrades over the years. Mm. So they had a good relationship. So the guy's like, I'll hook you up. Like, don't worry about it. Like, we'll, We'll get you one right away. You can even like make payments on it if you need to or whatever you got to do. Oh, that's like, cool. Yeah, so they're super cool. Everyone's real supportive. The guy, yeah. the guy that does my business there is this German guy, Basti, and he's he's like he always takes care of people. Uh -huh. He's really like he's not very like he's very like German and like oh you like you don't yeah. think of him as like super friendly, but he's a really good guy. Yeah. And, like helps people out. So like everyone wants to like help support him. You know what I mean? Oh, like, cool. It's pretty cool. It's cool. Yeah. That's good. I'm sure he doesn't really want good. anybody's help because he's a German. <laughs> like, just, I do not need other people to help me. I got this. <laughs> I would do that's it cool. Dude. Like, um, people want to help you, dude. Anyways, me and Paisel were just we groming out. I was. Really? I keep telling everybody. I was like, I was so excited to. I would wake up and just be like, "Let's surf." Paisel was the first person I hit up. Yeah, there's that's always, so. And, I'm so uh, jealous, dude. He was, was like, he was like a grom, just surfing for hours. Come that's in, we'd go idea. straight to the bird bath. Yeah. And just have a beer. I was like, this is the sickest thing What's ever. What's the bird bath? <laughs> it's just a restaurant with a pool, but there was always <laughs> chicks everywhere. Oh, oh. And it just, I don't know. Um, <laughs> did you create the nickname for that? No, my, Somebody, my, my friend Curtis, most likely, uh, or Brian. Those two guys that worked was, there, live there. It was so sick. Shout it's out really to Uluatu Surf Phyllis. <laughs> Where were you guys, like, were you guys surfing Ulus every day? No.
Not at all. I did one all. session Dude. out there. <laughs> <laughs> what, you walked through? You think Ulus is going to get crowded? No, no, no. Yeah. The other spot where you just said. Uh, yeah, just fucking oh, beat that shit out. out. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> Seriously. Temples is it secret at Dude, all? the crowd wasn't You don't really, understand. The like, crowd you're, wasn't you're really still bad. talking about Rocky Point every day. Like, hey, Rocky Point's good, guys. Come on down on my Instagram. Like, fuck. Like, he just did a Rocky Point yeah, rant like, yeah, right before yeah, you walked in. Why would you? Like, there's no reason to bring the consciousness to where you like to surf, okay? It doesn't help. That's all. Oh, I do. Everybody, <laughs> come down yeah, to Rocky Point. Right <laughs> you sponsor me for. We're gonna start reason. broadcasting swells. No, Guys, Rocky's just gonna be places. firing. Uluwatu is great. Uluwatu is great. Yeah. I did one session at Uluwatu. Collided with another guy. <laughs> put a hole in my epoxy. Got burned. Yelled at. Didn't make it back the rest of the trip. I was like, yeah. one and done for Ulus for That's me. That's wild, dude. Yeah. That is, place is is full of people. Crowd, is it turning into like Malibu? Would you say? No. Like how there's just no, it seems there's, like there's well, just no, no the, etiquette the, the or it's difference, like, the, the difference there, bad. yeah, the difference there is now there's like people is at, rain? yeah, wow. people at spots, like at paddling out places where like, they just have no business and it's not like they're being bad. They're not, they're just, yeah, they're, they're just cool, can't yeah. surf. Right. Yeah. So you're like, Hey, this is like a, like I literally would like super nice. Like, Hey, um, you probably shouldn't surf here. Like you're going to get hurt. You like know what I mean? Not guy. like, you're not like ruining my session or anything, but like. I'm concerned about you. Yeah. Like, why are you here? Like, just, you, did you read about this? So you're like, I'm going to go surf there. Like, there's there's a spot, like, down the road that would be 10 times better, and you'll have way more fun and won't get stitches. Yeah. But, yeah. like, they're just like, oh, I'm coming here <clears throat> to surf. Like, it's pretty bizarre. Dude, it's crazy. But I think the whole world's like that, right? Yeah. I've but felt- there's, like, dude, last year I saw a chick go over the falls on her knees on a wave that was, like, draining out into two-foot water. Yeah. And literally the whole lineup's all, no, like, don't go. And she's like, pals for it. And we're like, 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 no. No, no. She she literally had no idea. And she didn't even stand up. She was on a short board too. Like she wasn't on like a a soft top or anything like that would help her. And she literally (laughs) didn't stand up, went over the, like, got to her knees like a kneeboarder and then went directly nose down into the reef and then like, and then just got mowed. Right. And then I saw her like getting washed down the reef. I was watching her cause I'm like, okay, is this chick going to be like, okay. Yeah. And I'm watching her get washed down the reef and I see her like, she's like feeling like feeling her head and all this stuff. And, and, but I could tell she wasn't like really hurt, but yeah. she was like Conscious rattled. Walking. Yeah, no, she was totally fine. And then she got like another guy got kind of washed in there. They were almost like wrapped up together and pretty <laughs> soon I'm like, okay, cool. They're that's taken care of. Like they're going to leave. Like it's done. And then, Five minutes later, she paddles back up, and she, I'm like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah. And she and she just goes up to, to the whole lineup. She's all, "Can you guys tell me what I, what went wrong? <laughs> like what what were like literally? She was asking for like coaching and like direct, like she expected like, hey, these people will help me. So the next time I paddle for a wave, I should never go on that they're yelling at me not to go. Like I'll make it." And like, I'm all, what went wrong? I'm like, you just shouldn't be out here. Like, this is dangerous. And, yeah. and like, you could really get hurt. Like, I saw you hit your head, you know? Like, yeah. this isn't a beginner surf spot. This is like a black diamond, you know? Yeah. And she's like, don't patronize me. She started yelling at me. And I was like, whoa, like, whoa, whoa. You. Like, yeah, you asked dude. what was wrong. I'm all, literally, you just shouldn't be here. Like, that's, it, it's just not like a... That's just a reality. It's yeah. not like I'm like, you don't deserve you're to be here. Mean. You have to do this. It's yeah. like, yeah. you shouldn't be here because it's dangerous. That's like... Yeah, you're going to hurt yourself that's like, like a, you just That's did. like someone's like, I'm going to ride a motorcycle for the first time. I'm going to get on like a full gnarly like racing motorcycle yeah. and go down the road. Like, no, you shouldn't do <laughs> yeah. that. Like, you should yeah. start off on like a bicycle a and then like... Yeah. Or, or a little moped. Yeah. Like in yeah. Bali, you don't go to like... You know what I mean? Anyways. Yeah. My yeah. point is... Work. So I was trying to like be nice and she was literally like surfing's for everyone like this, you're, you're like trying to ruin you. me I'm like this is crazy like you're just <laughs> in the wrong crazy. place like yeah. you should go surfing I don't Dude. care but yeah. like not here because you're gonna get hurt like you already just got hurt even out here yeah. I've been like there's been a couple times where like you feel really bad too trying to tell someone like yeah I, you're not, you're not at the level you know so like yeah. I was like there's it's been a like, few times where like I'm not trying to put them down but I'm just like hey it's, it's super dangerous it's out like, here you like you gotta be like, careful being it might I know people are always like, oh, you're trying to tell people to leave. or yeah. That's not even the case. They're it's like, like you're completely like, I don't want you to get hurt because yeah. I'm going to have to go help you too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, so I'm trying to pre-help you. Like the lifeguards that say like, get out of the water. Yeah. Don't go in the water. I'm just saying, 
don't go surfing there where there's a barreling wave on one foot dry <laughs> reef yeah. and you can't stand up yet. <laughs> yeah. The that's, lifeguards that's have not to, a good idea. They have to yeah. snap at people because if they're nice, the people are like, yeah, Psh, yeah whatever. Oh, you go down to yeah. Waimea and they're just like, get the fuck out of the water, yeah. you kooks. Yeah, yeah they're they on their snap. megaphone at Waimea Bay yeah. just snap from their tower. Yeah. Yeah. Just but they, like, they have to because if they're nice, people don't listen. <laughs> it's and then, crazy. Yeah. And they end up putting their life in jeopardy, saving that person when they had already told them like, hey, it's dangerous, don't go out. Yeah. People are just... I'm just trying Knuckle to tell heads. people, like, avoid the stitches. Yeah. Just yeah, well, cruise. you put, that's the thing, like you just said, you, you put yourself in danger, and then once you're in danger, you're going to be putting a lot of yeah. people in danger you're, as you're well. You're expecting people to save you when yeah. you shouldn't even be in a position of needing to be saved. And that they take it so, like, we, yeah, I, really we all do the same thing, like, hey, you probably shouldn't be here. Like, there's even a spot over there that I recommend yeah, it's you not go like, to. It's not like no one's saying, don't surf. Yeah. Stop surfing. Don't yeah. do it. They're just like, Hey, go somewhere that makes sense. Yeah, yeah like right. You don't, you don't right start there. at the pinnacle. You start at the bottom, and yeah. and you Work ride waves up. that help you to get better. Yeah. yeah, don't try to like like I want to get barreled. I don't know how to stand up. <laughs> I saw a YouTube video on how to stand up and get Cola. barreled. I watched videos. <laughs> They're so sick. I want to go to. I bought this Pizel. I got this breadstick. Yeah, I'm going to Fiji. I'm going to Fiji. I'm going to Fiji now. Speaking of boards. Huh? Are you excited for the season coming up? Yeah. I, we're just saying, work. like, I haven't been this excited for a season in a really long time. And I'm like... Why well, you think the waves are going to be good? I have a feeling. After we're last, just talking after about last year. Yeah. After this, last year, yeah. it can't be worse, right? It cannot be worse. Uh -uh. But that, we'll was, just that was the worst wood, but season ever. Yeah. that was. I've lived Got here for 30 weird. years, and that was the worst winter wow. I've ever seen. Uh, and then other guys were like, I haven't seen it that bad in 50 years, but they probably don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, how do I'm, you, I can barely remember like yeah, yeah, last a year. session from last year. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, so excited for just like pipe and big outer reef jaw yeah. sessions. Like, um, Me too. Me any, too. any, any, um, <laughs> for us to hit up Paizo and be like, we need a board tomorrow. Just gets you know, right now. Yeah. I need, I need a board, a board yesterday. yesterday. Well, it's nice. <laughs> we found out on this podcast and Paizo's first episode that they can make boards within like 30 minutes. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. That's not going to happen. Wait. Um, well, what's up with We'll just the, say one day. So, Faisal, I saw John Florence with a new type of. Yeah, he's literally texting me right now about. Like, he's, he's, all, hey, are you, he's all, hey, are you back? I have some board ideas. I'm all, oh boy. <laughs> Tell him, come over there. and we'll he's rope all, him into the he's podcast. All, lots, <laughs> lots of ideas. I have lots of ideas. I'm like, mm, I right. was just with him. He was telling me about some new hemp stuff. No, it's it's flax. Flax. This that. Thing, like that. Looks like that. Yeah. 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 Little, yeah. Just like it's it's just it's just some material he's trying out. It's, I don't know. Is we'll it see. more environmentally friendly, as he was saying? I'd like to research that before I. Before I uh, say it, respond to that really because okay. I don't know. Um, hmm. A lot of times that material, like a lot of times materials that people see, they're like, like for example, there's a thing called basalt that people are using instead of carbon for different things, and then they're like, yeah, it's better. And then if you look at like the actual material itself, like if you're gonna throw it away or something, the basalt is better, right? So like, uh -huh. you take a piece of carbon and put it in the trash. Or landfill, yeah, it would last forever or whatever. And then if you took a piece of basalt, it would deteriorate faster or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then the process to to what what a lot of things you have to process those materials to oh, get yeah, to where yeah. it's usable for what you want to do. Yeah, and like that process can create a lot of an unfriendly yeah. shit. It's you know what like I mean? So Tesla you're like, it might not be the, the final yeah. the final thing might be better, uh -huh. but like to get to it. You have to like use these chemicals that you throw away, and like there's a lot of things that you it's do. The exact along the way, same right? thing with electric cars. Yeah, there's yeah. tons of things. So yeah. it's like there's all these balances. You're like, oh, this the result of an electric car versus a a, a right now if yeah. you take an electric car or a regular gasoline car and you drive it, the electric car is better in that moment yeah. for the environment. But like the process to, to get it. there or mm. to get rid of what you have or yeah. whatever is different. I'm you know? curious Crazy in thing. like 10 years For or sure. however long those batteries last once they fail because they're toxic, right? Like, yeah, toxic no, they're, waste. They're, yeah. at the moment there, you can't recycle them at all. What so is like 10 be, years from now? Where, like, where what's going to be new with surfboards? Yeah, who knows? I was going to ask are you guys even like about working this on winter. crazy or like, big boards? Are we going to change anything? Because they work so good. I know. But you guys are always I like to do stuff, but at the same time, like, it's there's uh i guess the leap in surfing 
is versus like the leap of boards. I don't know what comes first. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If people are like, yeah. oh yeah, I want to do this. Like a lot of times that's where I get from you guys is like, hey, I want to, I want to do this with my board. So I'm like, okay, I'll try to figure out how to do that. But then sometimes it's like, oh, this board let me do that too. The other mm -hmm. way around. Yeah. There's different ways, you know, and I think it just depends on what, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just I feel like, like it, it just like ideas kind of, I, I think a lot of it just kind of happens together where you're like, oh, I, I want to do this. I'm like, okay, let me think of a way to make that happen or like whatever, good surfers I mean? and yeah. good shapers. Yeah. And waves like, like, like well, and then even like the waves that like you guys are regularly surfing now mm -hmm. paddling into versus like yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. Those were like, those were just boogie board waves 10 years ago. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Real, like guys yeah. didn't even want those waves. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, Nate's going like around the world and finding those things. He's going like, where's all the boogie whole, waves? That's yeah. his whole deal. He's like, making yeah, he's friends like, with them. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's strategically, his buddies, he's, he's all, these yeah, are my buddies now. Dude, he's like, on it. Yeah. I give him props, but um, even it like Jaws, when we were young, like I remember thinking, man, will will we ever, ever even tow? Jaws, and then fast forward. Yeah, all of a sudden we're our Went first time we're, towing, we're back to paddling, and then <laughs> yeah. our first time there we're we're paddling Jaws, yeah. and it's yeah. huge. And now yeah. it's like, now the level is like, before we barreled. just exactly we just wanted to catch the wave. Yeah, now we're like, okay, now I want to rip the wave. Now I want to well, back everyone, this thing. Everyone so just wants to get barreled. I have a feeling we're almost gonna start that maybe going a tiny bit shorter to get barreled yeah. for like. Because the paddle power is there. Yeah, and on the, big like, boards you're saying. Yeah, maybe a little shorter for like. Just a little bit more, I don't know, response. Less nosedive or something? Just, yeah. I think it's, at this point, I feel like how they much shorter so can you go and how much thicker can you go? It might be coming down to, like, material. Yeah. Like, what? Then, I agree. Whatever. There's there's so many different aspects to it, but I think, I just feel like materials, they're, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, it's endless, Never right? Ended. Yeah, it, it here's really the, Here's is. the thing yeah. that, the one thing I trip out on sometimes with materials is, like, Maybe not necessarily just like big wave boards, like big big wave boards, but like just in general, it's like when you when you're trying to like tune boards to work really good, and then you're like, and then let's throw in like first of all, we have this like baseline. We're like we're working with these same blanks, mm. the same kind of glassing, da 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 da. Pretty yeah. simple, and so it's really easy to figure out that the design changes are what have made the board work better or, or worse. Yeah, because you're not. But then when you start throwing like okay, well, then I'm going to put this kind of cloth on it and we're going to use this kind of resin or I'm going to change it into these fins or I'm going to do this and this. Soon, for me, there's, like, all these parts of it that aren't really, like, under my control, even though, uh -huh. I mean, I can I can use those materials. Yeah. So that's under my control. But it's, like, the design aspect of it, like, I don't, I don't have any, like, input to, like, how a certain material flexes or does whatever, yeah. right? So then once you get, like, when you do finally get this board and you're like, wow, this board with, like, it has seven different freaking options that we use that we don't normally use. Yeah. And it works really good. Like then duplicating that is like, to me, I always think of boards like, how do I make more, more than one of these? Right. Yeah. Not yeah. just like, Dude, Hey, I want to make one, a magic board. I don't, I want to make yeah. like a hundred. How crazy know? is how this yeah. So that's where it gets struggle. weird to me where I'm like, that kind of almost like keeps me from wanting to go too crazy. Mm -hmm with stuff yeah. because you want more consistency. it's already, it's already hard enough to make boards like the way we normally do yeah. to have them really be consistent is like pretty tricky. Uh -huh. And so to, when you start throwing in like a new ingredient and this, and then you mix that up with, it's like cooking, right? If you like, yeah. if you yeah. have a restaurant exactly. and like your, 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 your most famous dish is like this one thing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, we just made it with like, we threw in like these four different spices and then we changed out that, Mm -hmm. like, to this other kind of meat yeah. and that, extra and soon, tablespoon like, of salt soon, you're like something. wow people were bummed they didn't like that you know yeah. like your restaurant you had, goes out of business yeah. or how, whatever. Do you, <laughs> how do you keep track of all those like combinations do you like is it in a computer system or like well all the like is it just shape in your brain wise, <laughs> well yeah unfortunately a lot is in my brain but shaping wise it's all like I can track the stuff yeah right? like mm -hmm. I can you can be like this is the board I like remember and show this and here's the serial Numbers, number and I can go back false. and look at like pull that file up Mm -hmm. And we can attempt to remake that, yeah. you know? But if it's like, oh, that was this one shape, but it had 30 different options, yeah. then it gets confusing. So that's, that's the I think, on, on my end, just like personally, is where I, I get scared. Not scared, but like I'm hesitant to like Keep trying to overindulge evolve. in all these yeah. different yeah, things. Yeah, because that's if a If I lot. could just find that's a formula, a like, hey, there's, here's a new formula to make a board this certain way yeah. every time, and it works really good then that's a simple, different way to do it. Yeah. 
But I then, think a lot of people don't know how hard it is to get uh, consistent. Consistent, like no, we all get those magic boards, and we're like, "This thing is magic." Yeah. You give it. To I your want shaker. another one. You're like, I want another one, and it's <laughs> yeah. so hard. Like that's why I don't call magic. Yeah, yeah. literally yeah. magic. Yeah. It's, right. so, it's like it's so trippy that's... how it's like they look the same, the files the same, yeah, everything's the same, but they just don't feel the yeah. same. Like it's such a trip. I think that's part of why we're so in that's love with it. It's so tricky and keep that know. magic board yeah. carefully. Take so, keep it so like when you, <laughs> so I think I always take John as a good example because he's so in tune with his surfboards. But yeah. do you ever shape a board and you like pick it up and be like, oh, this is one that he's gonna call like he's gonna say it's yeah. the magic board sometimes, or is it like I, it's more. You're like, I mean, oh, here you go. Like, we're pretty, like, he. we're so, like, tuned in with his words, you know what I mean? Like, they don't vary very much. Uh-huh. And, like, they've been, he's such a, like, just the way he operates is, like, he's not going off on, like, boom, boom, crazy, like, left mm. and right field. He's like, yeah. let's keep this. We're, we're, we're working on these little margins of improvement. Yeah. And so they're not, like, super mm. different. But, yeah, I mean, I pick up boards. I'm like, oh, this one feels meant, to, like, like, it could just be, like, a little bit lighter than another one or... Or just have something to it for sure every once yeah. in a while, but it's not like anything. Like, and and his feedback to me too is like it's pretty rare that he's all. It's not. It's not. It, it happens, but it's not. It's pretty rare that he's like this board is a piece of shit. Yeah. But it does happen. Like I'm like here's four boards that are supposed to be the same, and he'll be like this one just sucks. Like I never want to ride this board again. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm like so funny, I'm like yeah. why? It's like those are those all four came from the same file. I shaped them all at the same time. They got glassed by the same people. They went through the same process. Yeah. And he's just like this one is terrible. He just you fell know? a couple times. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I've even never, had but it could be two waves and he's like oh I'm over this. Yeah. 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 I've yeah, even true. had batches where the best feeling board is the worst, and the worst feeling board is the one yeah, that ends that, up being missed. Yeah, the oddball it's run, right? Where you're all, this thing's going to be junker. Like, this like one's a little head. heavier, yeah. and like, this doesn't thing feels just, like a lemon. Yeah, just doesn't like, have that oh. feel. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can like pick. What, okay, so what do you look for to be like? You know, when you pick up a board, you're like, oh, this thing's mental, and you like feel it, a brand new board. If it's light, like, first thing I'm. Yeah, the weight is so light, yeah, good light board, and then like short boards. Yeah, sometimes the rails to me are like. In my mind, like instantly judging, like yeah. if it like if it just has like a nice blend, I'm like this one just feels good. Yeah. Sometimes if it's yeah. a little full, you can too, see like boxy, like up. Like, well, that's yeah. all. That's those are the two you just described. Basically, the two senses that you get to use, mm-hmm. the two things that you get to judge a board by, mm-hmm. is literally one hand on the rail mm-hmm. and the weight of it. Yeah. Those are like yeah. your two major funk. Like that's pretty much all you got, right? Yeah. Like you can really. be like, oh, I'm looking at the rocker and let the like. I mean, sure, you could see something that just looks really ugly. Mm-hmm. The outline might look just gross. The nose is off yeah. or some yeah. weird thing. But basically, those are the two things that like 99% of people judge their board by yeah. first off. There you go, just like Under this. Under your arm, all you feel is like the... just this little piece in your hand <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. like this much of the board. <laughs> yeah. And then how much it weighs, right? And, and then, then you're like kind of swing it in your arm. You're like, oh, I fully killer. swing it. Yeah. Yeah, has a little yeah you go like this. You give it a little bounce. A little bounce. Like, look at the, the tail. The swing weight. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, okay. And then, then you start looking at it, but really, you're like, I'm not, I mean, it looks good, like, yeah. cool. Like, know, you don't really see a board ever and you go, like, this looks terrible. Yeah, right? next like, step, pretty rare. Next yeah. step for me, you Very actually rare. helped me years ago with my step ups when I was like oh, those tails. transitioning. Yeah. yeah, tails. So I go rail weight and then straight to the tail for me. Yeah. Like, more than the nose or anything. Yeah, those tails were all straight chunky. To tail. If it's got like too much beef or something, I'm just like, I'm not liking it. Yeah. Even shortboards, yeah. like, if it's too beefy, I'm like, this thing's gonna just not respond well and it's gonna just be i don't know feel pluggy kind of pluggy yeah so yeah. like the tails to me are really important and if i ever give people a little tips on their boards i'm like just work on your rails and tails but yeah. that's pretty funny though right like that's the that's what you feel you're all oh nice like yeah. if you pick up three boards yeah. and one's like lighter you're like it, it's only like <laughs> yeah. if you weigh those boards because i do that we'll weigh boards and i'm like this thing's only like two ounces lighter than this other board nothing it's yeah. almost nothing yeah. But it's like, oh, this is the one. Yeah, you it's can such feel it. a trip. It's trippy. It is crazy how sensitive. Then, like, the, I mean, the, like a lot of things you can't see when you have those batches of boards where like one's really good or one's really bad or whatever is like the fin angles and little things mm, and like yeah. little things like that that can just like be so different in what boards. Ha- what happened recently? I was like, I thought the fins were angled out or something. <laughs> the whole time yeah. up until yeah, like yeah. 29 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, instead of boards... Like the fins point 
in towards the nose, right? So they point angling towards like the tip of the <laughs> nose, and you're like trying to tell me like, shouldn't these be angling like no, out? I was to trying to tell you. I'm like, why are they? I was like looking. I'm like, why are they angled out like that? No, they're <laughs> like, in, in. I thought. Okay, now I know. But yeah. I was like, I thought they were <laughs> hanging off like the side, like yeah. I'm that like, cracked I'm all, me wow. Up. Oh yeah, Been you were there for too. A while yeah. now, haven't you? I was like, oh, that was like a grom. Cool. That was like a grom question. Like, that was like, so funny. Excuse me. Um, what about this? What about when Ivan surfed the heat one time when he was little and he like came in? He's like, just like we were super young and I didn't see it. I remember those guys telling me they're all. They're like, I haven't had his fins in backwards. Like they're pointing like he's like this board's all yeah, flat. he's all he's just had a terrible surf. He literally had the fins like the backwards. Oh so they're they're gosh. like rake towards the yeah. 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 And he's, he's like, like so he feels like, like it's dragging. He's like, I did so bad in that heat. His mom's like, What was wrong, Ivan? And then they like look at his bar. And I'm just like, Jesus. That's fins amazing. are backwards. That is so yeah. funny, dude. That was like Jeez. I don't know I don't know who was the coach in that one there. John's like helping him <laughs> Yeah, fans. John put all this Alex, yeah, Nate's Alex like, yeah. and Nate were there. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I'll tighten these fins so up for you. Funny. He's like, I lost my heat. He was probably only like seven or something, you know? Dude. It was like some Manihuni heat. Blame you. Or something. Yeah. Poor <laughs> yeah. yeah. so son. I'll throw it down. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so funny. Mm, it's, crazy. it's crazy how sensitive, like, little minor details on surfboards can be. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty sick, huh? Yeah. Is that from your mom? Yeah. This is too. Go, like, put your Cup, hand in here. You cup just it. It. It's good like, energy. I feel really oh. iry. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, iry. Ko is always it's nice and relaxing. Ko is quite the fidgeter. Ko I just fidget, fidget like, yeah. In, in high school, Ko would get a piece of like, paper this like big pop and just yeah, turn you it eat into them. a million. <laughs> yeah. Just tear stuff up. Let's see this. <laughs> now I just play with them. All right, well, I, I think we can just end there. We're at like an hour and 20 oh, minutes sorry. now. Are we? We'll oh, have to get you guys little, both on for another. Look at, look at your little thing now. It's all. Looks like a video do, 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 game. Yeah, this is where we make beats. It's like Simon says. It's the beat laboratory. <laughs> yeah, we can. We got a couple on here. I don't know what they are. Hopefully, Nate stuff comes out. <laughs> Get some sound effects. Yeah, that's. You got it. Clapping. Okay. Oh wait, I don't know how to turn it off. Clap track. Four, 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 four. DJ Jack. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's all. It's all. It's all. Jack is back there freaking out. Don't even look at it. You just deleted the whole thing right there. All well, right, right. well, we'll have to get you, you guys, guys on again for a full episode of oh, the Nate and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming nice by. Nice when are we nice doing one with the beers? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. we have a drinking oh, Nate, episode. Nate is doing a housewarming party this weekend. I don't know. I'm kind of just hosting it at his house. But it's the fights around. This weekend? <laughs> yeah. Today's Sunday. Jack's having a housewarming party at, Next at Nate's house weekend, for Nate. Weekend. Jack's having a party we with can, or without Nate. We, we need Nate's one more microphone because we can connect four. podcast out there where you guys are barbecuing. Everyone, yeah, everyone can yard. get up, sit down, and a barbecue just talk. cast. Barbecue yeah. cast. Yeah, that sounds killer. Oh, I got uh, a sponsor for the uh, Filmers Cup, by the way. Like a full on sponsor. Right, what, what we'll talk, you I'll have talk, to talk, run we'll talk it about it. You got to okay. run it by <laughs> the fucking way. Yeah, yeah, really? We'll talk, well, later, you have to later. talk to the next podcast. Commissioner. One, Commissioner, yeah, Commissioner yeah, needs you gotta, to know more. You got to run these things through. Jack's already just training for that. Okay, unless you guys have anything else you want to say, talk about new surfboards or anything coming out. No, basically, I'm just psyched. Like the Filmers Cup this year is just okay, gonna be amazing. Stay about. tuned yeah. for the Filmers like, Cup. That's real. <laughs> what that we is. all know that's the best contest of the year. Yeah, if, it like, is. Clearly, I'm gonna be like, there. We already have year. sponsors. Yeah. That's more than the WSL can say. Yeah. The WSL doesn't have sponsors. They actually don't even have a schedule yet. <laughs> yeah. They have no contest scheduled. We have our scheduled. Yeah. And it will be sponsors. Sometime in February ish. Yeah, it'll be live broadcasted too from oh, this channel. I can't be wait. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And me and Nate will commentate. Oh, and you will rotate everyone. commentating with heat's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, No, can that's we, what we're gonna do. Can we put bets on Nate blacking out. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh you, my god. <laughs> <100% laughs> betting the house. <laughs> betting the house. Who's that mad dog this year? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I, I ran was in, in there. I ran into that He's, guy in you, Australia. Dude, I know all these people that know him too. Yeah. Like, I everyone's at, like, that guy's rad. <laughs> I'm all here. I'm all here. Want to see a video of him blacked out? I'm all check out this. Anybody that knows him, I'm like, I got a video to show you. That's so funny. Look at here's this him falling over on his way to the paddle out. He's awesome, dude. Yeah. We'll dive yeah, into he, this that on, was actually on, like the, a, a on the next episode. His, he's not really like that. <laughs> no, anymore. I know. He was shook. He's, um, he was rattled. What about dude. how he made it to dinner? And he's just like, hey, what's up, guys? He yeah, he, he told me he just woke up. He's like, oh. Back from the dead. I'm fine now. Where was I all day? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I just, I just remember setting up the contest in the morning. <laughs> time That's what happens happens at dinner. When you start dude. drinking at 8 a.m. Yeah. He's like, yeah. teleported to Lele. Like, Look at this. This is incredible. You have time to black out during the day and wake back up. I think Nate and the, go to dinner. Nate, yeah. the first one said, "That sounds like just, a flight to like 
Indonesia. <laughs> Nate, time to get hung the over first twice. year you guys ran, Nate made it to his house. He just bailed, right? And then just said he just woke up in Pubake the next Dude, day. No, he woke up at his mom's lawn. Yeah, on, in the yeah. yard. And then then woke up in Pubake. So th- three consecutive days in a row, we ended up partying. That was, right amazing. Here. That was amazing. And he showed up every day on this couch, fell back, left his hat. Same Vans hat. Put it right there with all my hats. Second day, another one, identical, because he's got like 10. Ended up with three. In three days, he did the same thing on this couch, in the same spot, laid back three like this. Hats. Lost his hat. Yeah. And like, I had three. It lives there now. That yeah. was incredible. That's Every that, morning, so hungover. He started off the Filmers Cup that morning. Yeah, at, right here. At 8 a.m., cracking a beer oh, yeah. with Wasserman. Shotgunning a beer. And then he's just all, oh. Dude. I remember working in LA, getting the video, and I just had the worst oh, FOMO yeah, of my yeah, life. Yeah, that was, just, that was yeah. tough. This year we're on. That was tough. tough. Better tough. make sure to carve a little time out of your I'm, schedule for that I'm going to make it no matter what. I don't care if you're working on Jason Momoa's yeah. biggest <laughs> new hit or not. I'll be <laughs> there. Like, you gotta, I'll be like, write like, that into your contract. I'll be like, guys, I got to go. Yeah, I've got a special one day. Uh, Filmers oh, Cup. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to wrap this up. But if you guys want a surfboard, check out Paisel Surfboards. And Eli, follow him on YouTube, Instagram, everything. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with both of these guys for sure. Have fun. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya.